Hello everybody, I will be doing a spoiler review on this book, Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies. The first part will not be spoiler, it will be non-spoiler reviews. So, basically me telling, telling you what's the story about. So, this book has multiple POVs and a wide expanse of characters throughout the book. It has uh, tons of graphic scenes, not much of smut in here <laughs> or love scenes as i say love scenes in this book which i like it this is very very political it has a lot of political aspects in this book um also the first book doesn't really have a glossary or key terms um it doesn't have really much to work with so the second book does but the first book doesn't um this book is basically what I would say, um, based on West African uh, people, um, warriors here, and it tells a great story of how um, one man discovers land on the outside based on the secrets of his uh, own land. Like they keep, they try to keep the secrets away from him, basically try to cover their eyes from the outside. So um, the people in power won't lose their position. So, he's the one who's basically finding out what's out there, how to uncover secrets, and he feels strongly about being told the truth fully, not hiding anything, no nothing, which I get his stance on that. So, um, I read this book five stars. It's a really great read. It's a long read. It took me about like nine days to read, for sure, but it's, it's a lot to take in. It has a lot of key jewels, a lot of key points. Like, I know I did about more than eight highlights in this book. It has a lot of great quotes. It has a lot of characters. Like, most definitely a reread for me. All right. Now I'm going to be going on to the spoiler review. So this is my overview on Goodreads I did. Um, <laughs> if you look at my Goodreads, it was, it's something else. My, my review is something else. I curse a lot. So I was like, this book was so good because this book has so much in it. It had a lot of good quotes. You have to understand, like, these characters aren't stupid. They are very strong-minded people. Like, they don't let nobody play with them. That's why I love it. I like reading books that involve black people in their strong mind and their strong will and, you know, everything about it. I like books like that. And it's been a while since I read a good book like this one. So it took me nine days to read. Um, my favorite character in the book so far is Lee Lam. Um, you're not, it's, it's very uncommon, the books that I read, that you will have the male character as, like, the, in a sense, the weak character. Normally, you know, the female would be, but, okay. <laughs> so, yes, Lee Long is, she, she's my secret crush, okay? And the bad, that badass read in this book is insane. So, let's talk about each character individually. So we first going to talk about Danzo, of course, since we've been introduced to him first. So Danzo is from the city of Baza, right? So he's a shashi, is what they call it. I can't pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Is because has a lot of complexion, and um, he's just and his his mom is an outlander, and his dad is a mainlander. But his dad does not tell him about his mother. I don't know why. You would have thought that the author would have just give us a little bit of clue to guess a little bit something in the first book. Either that or I missed it. But, um, yeah. Oh, no. We actually got introduced to OK, but we're going to talk about Donzo. So, Donzo is a scholar. He attends the University of Baza. He's a Shashi because he's a lot of complexion. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, first of all, um, the story starts with him being late. He's trying to attend a meeting, but he's late, right? So he's at the gate, talking to the civic guards to say, I need to get in. So they's like, they see how he looks and his complexion and say, no, you do not belong in here. Like, no, you lying to us. Like, they, they, they not like, they like, uh-uh, you don't belong in here. And he's trying to tell them like, hey, I belong here. I have a meeting. I've been attending here, yada, yada, yada. But they don't believe him. So <laughs> he makes a comment and it's so funny. He makes a comment. I'm going to tell you right now. So, they call him a Shashi. And he said, calling me Shashi, Donzo said, yet you want to be me. But you will always be less than bastards in the city. You will never be better than me. And after that, 
got knocked out. <laughs> he got knocked out, and then he wakes up, and he wakes up to uh, he wakes up to see a Boda and Eshme, which is a Boda is Eshme's second, and Eshme is his intended, his patrol, right? So they patch him up, get him right. And Esme tells the boulder to take the silver card away. So Esme and Donzo was walking, talking, and then and she's getting on him about being late to the meeting. And he's like, I think at first he said, you know, uh, I didn't expect that to happen. That was automatic control, was how I see it, because that was really out of his control. Like he is not in control of those silver guards. Like, and your silver guard shouldn't be acting like that. And on top of that, they should have known him, who he was. Like, that don't make sense to me. <laughs> that don't make sense to me at all, unless that dude was new. And I was like, that was completely out of control. So, and then as she was talking, I guess he's like, okay, I won't do it again, yada, yada, yada. Um, then they basically meet his uncles. You meet his uncles. You know, <laughs> his uncles, basically, I feel like they're just living off his dad. Because his dad is, a, I would call him like an herbalist. So he's technically a healer, and um, he's been granted uh, the healer in the position in the uh, in Baza or whatever. So yeah, and they just I feel like based on his interaction with his uncles, like they always feel the need that they can say something. Like y'all y'all can't say nothing. Y'all don't really do nothing with yourselves. Like stop. So he's after he talked with his uncles, he talked with his dad, and his dad you know punished him in a way for missing the meeting, and um. He got to sort out the yams or whatever. So, he he did that, which makes him be late to class. And then, once he's late to class, as soon as he gets there, he's been told to meet up with, to go see uh, Duve, or Duve, which is um, his mentor. So, he she basically tells him that, hey, the, um, the people think you're <laughs> you stole the codex. Um, and they want you out. They want him to be suspended um, from the school, exposed, exposed from the school, whatever. <laughs> they be kicked out of the school, honey. And then said, and she tried to like negotiate with them, like if he finds it, and then he can um, be able to graduate with his class and stuff like that. So, and I feel like in a way that she believes that he took it, which he didn't. Um, and then we go on to him being Zach, and Zach is acting weird because he's been spoken to by his dad about his position because he shouldn't have, he should have been with um Donzo at that time to where that situation between the civil guards shouldn't happen. So, um, so we meet Nim, and she's the city's fixer, so she solves all the problems. So she's the city's fixer, and basically at this time she's talking to um, this the city speaker, which is Abu. His name is Abu Soba. I'm gonna call him Abu. So he's he's basically saying that when we read at the beginning of the book, okay, which is his daughter went to um, the weary conversary, right, to meet up with. Uh, I'm trying to say it in order, but see, he's Abu's daughter was supposed to meet with Lee Long's dad about this uh, Ebor thing, right? Yeah, so they got that stone thing, and and basically Abu was just fussing at her, like this is so much going on, we need peace, yada yada yada. So she's like, okay, so she's gonna send her hot hands because. Abu told her about the yellow skin person that entered the land because they got the Ebor. Um that it's spot they didn't know that's a she. So um Nim said try Nim has dispatched to sign off on sending some more hunt hands around to make sure they catch the yellow skin person. So boom that happens. Nim takes Eshme to the civic guard that hurt Donzo and Nim suggesting that she 
them suggesting that they just put them put them over the border and then Esme's like the border is closed they closed the border because the yellow skin so she suggested and now that's the sign right there y'all foreshadow Esme suggesting that they kill him right so they do like they they told Oboda to kill the civil guard which they did and um because it was torturing him so she suggested that they kill him and then them like we don't get we don't celebrate disrespect because if they disrespect Donzo they disrespect all of us because that is her betrothed and um I was I suspected that they was going to kill, to kill the civil guard because he has no business doing that like off with his head it ass. so they did <laughs> So we're gonna go to let's talk more about Esme. So Esme likes to attend the court, the court meetings, um, the court affairs between the people. When she says she's trying to get to really know the people well and what and how they tick or whatever. And I thought that was cool. I like that. I really like that. Um, the parts where she attended the courts. I wish we had word at or something like that. It was, it was really good. So she was really that is foreshadowed again. That's how she gets to know her people mm-hmm. and how to talk to them. Yeah. So, uh, no, let's go back. Nim told before I think Ashmay left. Nim was talking to Oboda and asked him to obtain two things, which is which which was the Codex and the Igbor, which is the stone thing because she was going to use it to gain power and control. That's what she wants. So. We're gonna go to Ashme. Ashme got a little secret lover. Um, she she doing her little thing. Fast forward again. Let's go to Zach. Zach is like a he don't got many parts. He's got like one or two parts here and there. Um, he got his little secret lover, his little thing going on. Um, he got his little thing going on with his lover. But Don's really don't got nothing going on. He just. <laughs> He's just basically like there to the, the story tell. Yeah, there to story tell. He loves storytelling. So at the moon crossing, fast forward. At the moon crossing, um, they enjoy their time, him and Ashme, and came to find out that Abu's dead. Abu and his family's dead or whatever. And they blame it on the yellow skin. So we go to Nim. Nim is confronted by the, le- the yellow skin. Um, and before she, the before the yellow skin could have attacked them, she's in a battle with uh, the hunt hand, the guards. Like, oh, it was so, like, A1. I was like, yeah, that's like a call me long. <laughs> you call her, her name was me long. So <laughs> I was like, go ahead, girl. And then, like, Nim was trying to get all the bones to, to work and get the magic to happen. She put it in the tub, and then the water just squished out, and then it, it was supposed to aim for Lee Long, but I see Dodge did, and it hits the hunt hands, and they literally like splattered and were guts and all, and it's yucky. So, um, I I think uh, Nim tried to do it again, but uh, what Lee Long, Lee Long does is they basically fall out the window somehow, some way, and end up on a, on the ground where. So, yeah, they out the window, they fail, but Lee Long is really gravely injured. She tried to get the bones to trample her fall, so I won't hurt as much, but she still gets hurt either way. Now, Nim is hurt like a bitch. I heard, I think her legs broke. So her legs broke and whatnot, but, um, yeah. So Donzo finds, Donzo finds Lee Long. And takes her to his his barn or his shed or wherever the fuck it is, and because she was there before and attacked him, and she said that was yeah, she was there before and attacked him, but I didn't discuss that part. But yeah, he takes her back to his barn and stuff like that, and then Esme and Aboda find them, and Esme is getting mad at him like you conspiring with a fugitive, somebody who's a threat to that to Baza. And he's like, he he's he got questions, okay? He got questions in regards to Lee Long and her abilities and stuff like that. So he, uh, I don't know if he trusts her, rather, because the blame is on Lee Long of killing Abu. 
But I, I don't know. I think he he has an inkling that she doesn't she didn't kill him. But um, yeah. And uh, let me tell you what happened. I think I think Lee Long was trying to do something. No, Ashman was trying to do something. Lee Long knocked her ass out with an arrow. It didn't hit her, but something happened. <laughs> And then hit her, but she got knocked out. A border was trying to kill them, and Zach came in and knocked his ass out. And then Zach and Donzo were talking like, "We gotta go, like we gotta leave." And then they, they so Zach and Donzo going back and forth about leaving. Zach eventually agrees, and they leave. They go into the breathing forest. They go into Badusha. Um, going to Badusha. So, and then we, okay, let's, let's start with Ashme. Let's go with Ashme. So, Ashme wakes up in the infirmary, the hospital, whatever. She's being taken care of, I think, by Donzo's dad. I'm not sure. How about? And, um, uh, she got minor injuries. She's not, she don't got that much of anything because she she knocked her ass out. Uh, but Esme sees her mom and sees her ass just fucked up to the for the flow up. And she there was this part and she was like, She's not affected by it. Normally when you would see your mama injured and stuff like that, you'd have feel all type of way, but she didn't feel shit. And then she was like, I don't know. She said something about it. She said, I don't know why I don't have nothing to feel about it. I don't know. I don't know what that what this feeling is. And I was like, That's the signs of a psychopath, busy ass bitch. And that's what I say <laughs> in the in the notes. So yeah, so basically, Ashme, her mother is down, so Ashme is the head now. They call her Ma Ashme. She's the head now, in place of her mom, so she's the fixer. And um, she's being helped by Sati as well. So Ashme putting in fucking work, baby. She is confronted by, um, who's she confronted by first? Dota. And Dota is telling her about what her mama doing messing with those bones and shit and got the codex and telling her you got three days to find out of these shit or else and she sends Oboda out to go find Donzo and them and she's trying to she 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 and she talks to Oboda for a minute too and see how much he you know he don't know much other than that she was working with the bones so yeah so she sends uh, Oboda out and she's trying to figure out how to get out of the situation. Um, that's a badass bitch, though. Like, <laughs> so I mean, along the way, she she talks with uh, Bashue. He's um, damn, I forgot what he is. Him and his people, I forgot. Um, he gets she she get introduced to Bashue, and he's. He's a little smart. He's a he. I was calling like a fast talker, like I would say he's sort of like a speaker as well. He try to get he he's smart with that shit. So basically, they have a plan to get uh, Miss Ma'am out of this situation. So he helps her talk to the crowd and get him on her side and whatnot due to the situation at hand. And um, I think ignore ignore something like that um eventually sides with her because they didn't like each other at first but she sides with her and whatnot um yada 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 let's talk about let's talk about uh donzo so donzo zach and uh, lee long are in the breathing forest lee long is gravely injured but the whole trip to wadusha he gets to know more about her people and her. Like, he, he gets to know about how everything went down, how everything happened. And um, along with how the bones work and stuff. So, I'll say that's basically what it is. Um, so, the last day that... Oh, hmm, The last day that they are breathing in the breathing forest and close to Wadusha, they get attacked by hunt hens and a leopard. And when he had the bone in hand, I think he created the Scopey or the Scopey been following. Them. Oh, the Scopey is attracted to the bones. And he gets control of it somehow, some way. And the Scopey ends up killing the hunt hands and the leopard. 
and the, I mean, and they got affected by the by the blast because I think it can it has like lightning powers or something, just like radiance. So that's crazy. Anyways, so they get so they get found found by BM Sway. Um, which is, uh, she's like a mother of the town, of Wadusha. So, they get found by her. She's like, what y'all doing here? Y'all not even supposed to be here. And they want them off the land. So, uh, and I think he's basically telling them what they, what they want. And then she eventually comes around in, in regards to that. And sides with Donzo. And Zach is gone. Zach like fuck this. I don't want to be in this at all. Zach don't want nothing to do with this. So he wanders off and he's followed by Katu Kakutan, Kakutan, which is um I don't know some some like BM's way, but she's like the more like tougher version, like of the land, I guess. I'll call her Oya. BM's way is Yamoya and Katu Kaku. Twan is oh yeah so she interrogates Zach and brings him to Beam's way and Beam's way like you got futures of Basa here they don't belong in our land you and you um you what do you call it something about the peace treaty going against the peace treaty and try to bring more problems to them than they need to have so, <laughs> and then she's trying to get him, and Katu Kwan and BM Sway fought, fight or whatever. I don't think that bitch can really die. Um, because because I had a part where the soul was just better than BM Sway neck, and the bitch got up. I don't know. Either that or they healed her. So they make a deal. They was like, we gonna leave the land. We want no problems. So they eventually leave. They eventually leave but I don't think Zach was even with them I think Katu Kwan just asked some questions to let him go I think because Zach was gone Zach is gone and they was trying to leave and then they was they all of a sudden saw Oboda carrying Zach to a pole or something like that I'm trying to kill him burn his ass and they just a fight breaks out between Oboda Whatever, yada yada yada. Lee Long, I think Lee Long or Katu Kwan kills Oboda, right? But Oboda kills Zach because he burns his ass alive. Because, because Oboda burns Zach as soon as he finds out that Lee Long who she is because she changed skin. And, um, yeah, he's gone. <laughs> so, I don't know. They moving, they moving. They they under the mountains. They I think they're trying to hit the Basa or something like that. And then uh they eventually get caught by Ashman. I think that's what happened. They eventually get caught by Ashman, but Ashman on her serious shit. Like she know how to use bones. So we find out that Ashman is pregnant by that dude. She's pregnant. A boat is dead. She brings a boat back to life. But it's not her that brings him back to life. It's the baby. It's, it's the bone likes the energy of the baby because the baby is big. The baby is, yeah. So, um, I think Dota comes in there and threatens her and says, you need to come to us. And she's like, but she died. And then she gets a Dota to kill him, to kill Dota. And, um, so, yeah. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. Um, I don't know how she ended up meeting with Bashue. I don't know. She meets with Bashue. Bashue with all that shit. He's like, man, how you gonna just kill him? He's hype you're the first elder. Like, girl, you crazy. And I guess she, she, she. I guess they want static too. And um, the boat is like. Damn, Oboda kills Bashue and another one, and but Igor sides with um, Eshme, 
and stuff. I'm wondering if the second book is this bitch still pregnant or the baby did. I don't know. Anyways. Um. Oh, because her when her mom fell from that window. When them fell from that window, she got a piece of the egg board. She got a piece of it. But I think if you use so much, it will turn to dust. Like, you can only use it so much. Anyway. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. So, let's fast forward to... Oh, Esme. Esme there just getting everybody mad at the yellow skin, Donzo, and everything. Like, she's trying to get them bitches to hate them. And, um... And, and my review here, I was like, fuck both of them. Like, they both fuck up. They don't even see reasons. They didn't even just... I just mad they didn't get to take... I feel like Donzo... Donzo, is he so much of a storyteller? He didn't even get them to understand his point of view or where he's coming from. They didn't really get the chance to hear him out. So I was like, fuck Ashmay disrespectfully because I really thought she had potential, but she really changed up on me. Like, why? Her fuck up mama. I was like, bitch, if I would see her mama, I would trip her ass off from that wheelchair because Nim was talking after she felt better. Nim was saying, telling her, telling Ashmay about the threats and asking her what's been going on since so she been down in a coma or whatever the fuck that bitch been in. And just filling her head up with more chaos, chaos and fucked upness. She already fucked up. And I felt like Ashmay was hateful and evil for no fucking reason. But I know that they ain't she let nobody play with her. You can let nobody play with you. But see reason, but I don't know. I felt like she didn't really had a valid reason to be the way she was. Either that or she was just always like that. Always fucked up in her head like that. I think she's really a real life psychopath though. Or something in regards to that. Like, I think she really is fucked up for real. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. Let's go back to when Esme found them. So, Esme finds them and, um, has Donzo's dad. Fast forward. Donzo, I mean, not Donzo. Esme kills, burns, burns her dad with the sword, with the knife, so whatever you call it. He's dead after trying to use him as bait. I'm trying to get Donzo to give her the a boar. Which uh I don't think he gives it to her. But it was a whole showdown. Um Yeah, it was a whole showdown. They get picked up by the shot. So they get picked up by Kubra. Um, which he's a part of the Gabo company. They get picked up by, it's called Kugwas, Kugwas. I think these little, I would say these little bird looking things. <laughs> um, yeah, they get picked up by them and they just deciding how to go from there. They, they go into Chabo and, uh, we into a new territory and, Lee Long and Donzo just trying to figure everything out and see what they're going to do from there. So basically, this was a great story. I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, What I want to happen in the second book, which I am a little bit into the second book. I'm like on chapter six. So, because um, I did get an arc. <laughs> I hope that... Donzo potentially becomes because now we know that Ashme is what she called the Red Emperor because of the Ibor, the Red Ibor. She wants to call herself the Red Emperor, so she's an emperor now. So hopefully Donzo becomes something like that in the second book, and he proves himself to his people because I know the uh, the Basai really don't like Ashme for real. They starting to get irritated with her because she 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 bring people back to life. And, um, so I'll, hopefully Donzo proves himself, you know, he gets to talk to the people beside and he overthrows, uh, Esme crazy ass and the mama, if she's still alive. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> I try to see if Esme's still pregnant. Is she still pregnant? I gotta go back in the book, y'all. <laughs> I gotta see if she's still pregnant. They need to see, see, they need to go. So I think... Uh, I think Ashmay is going to pass away. Nam is going to pass away. Donzo is going to reclaim his throne. They're going to look at Donzo differently. Lelong going to be... 
you know, queen of where she, queen of Namge. And hopefully we get to see and know more about uh, Donzo's mother. Dad's dad, so he can't tell him. And he should at least say something before he passed away, like, of his mom. Because we don't we don't know nothing unless it said it in the story and I didn't pay attention. So hopefully it says it in the second book. Um, I really thought that it was going to be Zach, Lee Long, and Donzo. So this, this is a really different crew. But um, I see how he did it. Like, they got an army. Mian Shui and Kaku Chuan. You know, they got their people. And, you know, they can potentially help. So, uh, ho- hopefully he <laughs> brings the, the Scopey back somehow, some way. Or something that's different from that. Like, you never know. I can't really predict for a fact what's going to happen in the second book because he's he's pulling some stuff that I didn't think like he pulling the unexpected for me and I like that when these others do that so yes I can't wait to finish it thank y'all for listening to my review thank you all for listening to my review and if I missed some parts let me know down below if I was incorrect on some parts some parts (laughs) let me know down below as well I want to know who read this but y'all need to read this for a fact because this is really a good book this book has potential okay this is most definitely a reread for me um yeah and I will come back with a review on book two so yeah